Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video of myself and the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we are going to kick things off with a little something regarding what AMD are doing with Zen 2. And essentially what we have here is some more kernel patches for Zen 2 and we have a bunch of revisions to their EDAC patches for the kernel error detection and correction code. And of course, this is all for Linux, if the uses of the word kernel weren't a clue for you. But before I go any further into this topic, I just want to say that this is not, I do repeat, not for Matisse. This is going to be for Epic. So this is going to be for Rome, second generation Rome, not Matisse, just to be clear. But what we have here is still very interesting, as the patches are basically preparing future AMD CPUs to have more than two memory controllers per die. I have a direct quote here from one of the patches which says, quote, the first few models of family 17H all had two unified, unified memory controllers per die. This was treated as a fixed value. However, future systems may have more unified memory controllers per die. And a later piece of code basically says, or at least implies, that we could see as many as eight memory controllers per die. As the patch reads, quote, increase the size of the struct chip underscore select array to eight, which is the largest number of controllers per die currently supported on AMD systems. So what does this actually mean? Well, the first generation of Epic still had eight memory controllers, but the memory controllers were directly on the CPU dies. So basically, all we're seeing here is that the eight controllers are being put onto the I.O. die and the CPU cores and access different channels through the I.O. die itself. Now, this isn't a huge deal, to be honest. It is quite expected, as we do also see the number of physical memory channels remain identical, but it is still interesting to me because we've basically seen them prep for the new architecture and also the new I.O. die as well. So something interesting to tuck into your hat. But we have yet more to discuss, of course, today. And our next topic is going to be regarding a GTX 1650 laptop leak. So this leak comes to us thanks to, you probably guessed it, the well-known leaker known as Tom Appisack on Twitter. And he has tweeted a screenshot of a 3D Mark entry for a laptop which also shows the GTX 1650 of course which is a graphics card expected to be announced in March so this month somehow it's already March anyway but we also see the recently announced i7-9750H now again according to Tom Apisak this is part of a GTX 1650 laptop so we are presumably looking at the mobile variant of this particular graphics card but we can still see the specs so let's go through them so as the the screenshot shows we have a base clock of 1395 MHz and a boost of 1560 and if you've been paying attention to the recent rumours regarding the desktop version that is supposedly going to have a 1485 MHz base and a 1600 MHz boost. Unfortunately, we don't see any CUDA cores listed on this particular 3D Mark entry, but if the rumor mill is correct, we are going to be seeing 896 CUDA cores. But what we also see on this entry here is four gigs of memory, and most likely we are seeing GDDR5 here. Now, I expect this to basically live in the same family as the 1660 Ti. It's most likely going to a not have any of the real-time ray tracing capabilities but of course that is pure speculation but i would be surprised to see any ray tracing on this particular card desktop or otherwise because again the 1660 tie doesn't have it and it would make no sense for the 1650 have it given that of course they do not want these cards to start cannibalizing the main flagship touring cards as for the price tag, unfortunately, we don't yet know for sure, of course. This is all rumour and speculation. This could all be 110% wrong. It could be partially correct, or we'll have to wait and see. But in terms of what the rumour mill is saying, the price tag is basically being agreed upon as being roughly $179 for the GTX 1650. Now we're going to move over from AMD, sorry, from, from Nvidia, should I say, to a little something regarding both AMD and Intel, as we have another market share report from MindFactory.de. 
So as you will see on screen through the various images, is they have broken down into AMD and Intel, revenue, and obviously what has sold them the most. So unsurprisingly for AMD, we see Pinnacle Ridge in the massive lead of 71%. And Threadripper is making up a tiny portion, just 2%, and of course Raven Ridge 15% and 12% uh, for Summit Ridge. Whereas at Intel, we are seeing a pretty even split between Coffee Lake and the Coffee Lake Refresh, refresh excuse me, as we have 45% for the original Coffee Lake and 48% for Coffee Lake Refresh. However, for revenue, obviously we still see Pinnacle Ridge making the most revenue for AMD, unsurprisingly, but obviously Threadriver has a bit more of a share of the pie here. And interestingly, even though it's only a few percent ahead of the Coffee Lake uh, original, the Coffee Lake Refresh for Intel, is making up a significant 58% of their revenue. But how are they doing versus each other, I hear you ask? Well, you'll see another chart on screen now, which shows off the revenue for both companies. And obviously, we're going to be paying attention to primarily the months of February, but obviously January as well. So you're seeing a lead for AMD. 51% in February versus the 49% of Intel, so just scraping past in the lead, and the same again for January, 52% versus Intel's 48%. Interestingly, this is obviously a bit of a, a decrease for AMD versus December, where we saw 56% versus 44% of Intel. But where this becomes really interesting is our next image, which is actually the number of CPU sold. So again, focusing on the month of January and February, you can see a significant lead for AMD in the number of CPUs sold. So for January, we see 65% versus the 35 of Intel, and February is pretty much the same story with 64% for AMD, 36% for Intel, and December, the lead was again more pronounced, where we saw 68% for AMD and 32% for Intel. So it goes to show, excuse me rather, that AMD has obviously been keeping the pricing of the Ryzen processors pretty competitive, so despite the fact that they have a, a lead for at, least, at least for minefactory.de a number of CPUs sold we see a very close call for the revenue they are still in the lead but it is margin of error level so in case you've missed the previous reports that I've done this which I highly doubt these reports are fairly regular this is for just the German retailer minefactory.de but they are one of the most popular if not the most popular in the area so obviously while this is just one retailer it is still really interesting to see such a significant lead for AMD and just really does show how great of a job they have actually done with Ryzen. So we are going to finish things up now with a brief revisit back to Intel as they have made things a little bit better for anyone who uses OBS. So you may have seen this detailed at CES 2019, but basically the long story short here is they've got a new support for the new version of OBS Studio, version 23.0.1, which adds improved support for GeForce cards. So this does include the new RTX 2060, as well as all the mobile and Max-Q variants. So basically what we are seeing here is an FPS impact drop by as much as 66%, at least according to NVIDIA's own internal test. And of course we're also going to be seeing some benefits bestowed upon older GeForce cards as well, given that this is a result of improvements to NVIDIA's hardware encoder. So we are going to be seeing efficiency increases for bitrate consumption and graphical fidelity as well, and again just that all important impact on FPS. So for those of you who do use OBS and have a GeForce or newer RTX card, this is some pretty nice news. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. As always, your support really does mean a huge deal to both myself and Paul. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does make a big difference, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.